Hey, and we're off. How's the audio? How's the video? And good evening to everyone. It's the last one of the year. I am just getting tired and confused, so I need to <laughs> I need to I need to stop and just end out the year with all the insanity that normally brings and then uh yeah, then we'll get back to doing some more of this lifty stuff after. Which is going to be cool. Um, I'm running away to England soon as well, so I will not be available. So good evening to Borodas, Pomdapimp, Sebot, and Shimera, and anyone else who's lurking in the Twitch chat has yet to alert me of. Uh, audio videos, okay, thank you, sir. Right, so let's start with some stuff. Things that are moving, so we have something to look at. Um, yeah, so this evening I wanted to do some stuff with uh, deferred rendering. Because getting started with that is actually very simple. There's, it's a it's a fancy word for a very simple thing. But then we'll look into the, some of this kind of stuff that we can do uh, with deferred rendering. Hey, Seb. Um, well, the first thing is going to be to defer the shading of the objects. And then we're going to um, actually do... We're going to see how it allows us to do many lights, hopefully. We might get around to that this evening. Um... So this is the many particle simulation we had from last time, um, or two episodes ago. We've got one object here, which is a gravity well. Um, and all these guys are kind of chasing it with some fudge factors, which are knocking them around. Um, the little guy here is emitting light with a certain fall off. And so everything's just zipping around. We're going we're to want a lot of lights in this scene. Um, so let's look what we have to be, uh, at what we have to begin with. We will work out from there. So, uh, the important bit, I suppose, well, this is this is our rendering pipeline so far. We've got a fragment stager called some vert stage, and a, sorry, a vertex stager. And a, really? None of the words? We're just going to add letters to some and remove them for others? Let's swap them around. Okay, some vert stage, some fragment stage. Um, there's these two GPU functions. And we are, we're using instancing and a load of stuff here to do all of this. So each one of these is going to go through this pipeline. Each of the vertices are going to go through here, each of the fragments through here. Um, we are doing some basic transforms. We're only doing a kind of general diffuse shading. We've got a little ambient, a little bit of diffuse. Um, each of these has a texture, even though it's a very boring texture. So it just looks like solid colors. That ball in the middle you can barely see also has a texture. Um, we transform some of these positions into clip space. And that's the first return value, so effectively GL position to those who are used to GL stuff. And then the rest of the values are passed on to the next stage, in this case the fragment stage. And they become our frag position, frag normal, in world space. And, um, wow, that's looking really choppy on the on the video there. Yeah, maybe it's just OBS, we'll see. Um, and uh, UV coordinates for texturing. And then all we do is we pull out the... Uh, the uh, color from the texture and we do some fudging around to calculate diffuse. Um, so we calculate a diffuse strength and then we fuck around with uh, a very fake attenuation. So light falls off rel like relative to the inverse of the distance squared. So we have a distance here, the difference between the light and the fragment position in world space. Um, that distance times by itself here, which is a squared, this divided, well, this one divided by this, which is our inverse, and then some fudge factor that we can just mess around with to get a uh, different fall offs um, for the light. And so we'll leave it at this for now, but we're going to have loads of lights soon. So hopefully we'll see how this goes. Hey, K.A. Hey, um Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, we're going to want to split this up. Now, I'm, I've had a look at learnopengl.com, which is a great site, and they have a, a whole tutorial on deferred shading. Um, the first bit is really that we're going to pull um, the most interesting parts of this fragment shader out. Um, we're going to save all the information that it uses into uh, textures, and then we're going to do all of this computation in a second pass. And that's the deferred bit. It's literally just, literally just write the values into some textures, save them for later, and then do another pass where we use this and actually do the shading. Um, so really, this is a caching thing. Write everything into some buffer, then we're going to use it later. Um, but the, the good part about this as a start is when we're drawing all of these um, particles, all of these cones, uh, 
everything's happening in parallel and we aren't like we're not sorting these we're not drawing these in a particular order um so at every position let's see if i can actually not point with my finger and do this on here at every um position every uh, window position there may be many fragments at different depths so all at the same x and y but at different z's in window space um by saving all of this stuff out to a buffer out to textures and then doing all the shading in the deferred stage we're only having to shade the ones that actually um actually made it into those buffers like so we're basically culling all the stuff um further away and just keeping that nearest one uh yeah palm the pimp giving everyone the finger so let's do that to start with so what do they use like what does what does this tutorial use well they're sa saving the um position and normals and albedo and those we definitely have we're not doing any specular in ours because we've been oh, actually I, I say we've been stu uh, super lazy I actually just stripped out that code to make it a little smaller um so these are the only things we need but we want to store we're going to need to store them with a fair degree of precision so we're going to use um floating point textures which is really easy it's just going to be a vector three so we need a vector three for this a vector three for this and uh, we'll double vector three for this as well so we'll have three vector three textures and yeah we'll start there so let's make some of those so let's um just start hacking away and see where it goes so defar um normal so this is all going to be going into a like if we're going to render out one pipeline into textures uh we're going to be using an fbo so um we'll do, do it first well, yeah we'll call it first pass fbo and we'll make this soon so we'll just say it's nil for now we're going to need a um, position text and we're going to need a normal text so norm text and we're going to want an albedo text that'll do oh we can just write that out and fill really doesn't need to be shorthand we're fine with this okay so now we want to defund make um defer fbo man i am so tired <laughs> oh I, when i left work today i've just been yawning the whole way so I'm, i've got my coffee on hat and on hand and i'm trying to keep it together but as i can already hear from my own voice i'm i'm losing it this is this is definitely the end of the year right so make a deferred fbo um let's set the um, position texture to be some texture uh, with no initial contents um, dimensions which match let's uh let's look at our viewport dimensions for the current viewport okay so that's what we've got over there over here um at the moment i think if i remember correctly in make texture whoops not that if i look at the documentation I thought the um no the size isn't going to be taken from the viewport that will be done if um yeah no, that's okay i was working out if it would take the dimensions automatically from the viewport but that's fbo's so i'm not going to worry about that for now um let's do dimensions are going to be just okay viewport dimensions we've already got them dim and element type is going to be a vec3 now we're using full 30 bit 34 bit floating point vectors uh, in this uh we could just use 16 bit ones um but yeah we could use half floats but it really doesn't matter um diablo sgb i guess you consider yourself a list wizard yet no um i'm just some full hacking away um it's nice when things work though so yeah actually it's basically just three of the same yeah we'll do this so um make defer fbo oh no cool that that made the textures but uh we didn't actually make the fbo itself so let's write that out so make fbo and we're gonna have um three attachments well we're actually gonna have four attachments we're gonna have a depth attachment as well um the first attachment is going to be position text 
and you can kind of imagine what this is going to be. Attachment one and two. Our normal text. Whoops. What am I doing? And albedo text. And lastly, we're just going to we're going to need a depth attachment, and we want the dimensions to be the same as the others. Otherwise, it's going to complain. It will give us a warning about that. Um, let's see if this works. Okay, a variable dim is unbound. Oh, of course it is. Because I'm now doing this over here. Let's just take this over here. I'm just running this in the REPL because I don't fancy uh, reinitializing those textures again. And I'm going to do this a bunch of times. Function D is undefined. Of course, this is meant to be a list of D. And then we've got an FBO. Awesome. And so we're going to set F um, first pass FBO to be that. And we should have done that here as well. Set F first pass FBO. And then we'll wrap this all in an unless first pass FBO. Make all the things. List. And then, seeing as other people might want to write, run this code at some point, I'm going to shove it into reset up here. And this will get run when the project starts. Okay. So we've got a first pass FBO. And I'm going to tell this to play again because I must have hit an error and told it to abort instead of continue. Um, but that's fine. And so yes, we have an FBO with three attachments and a depth attachment, so four attachments. Three color attachments, I should be saying. Um, now we want to render into this. So if I go to play with verts, um, we will go and look at, where are we drawing everything? Here. With FBO bound, and then we just say our FBO. And that is now, everything's being rendered into that FBO, except this, this guy is still here. And that's because that draw is here. So we need to take that. We want to shove that here as well. Um, we don't have that anymore. And we will want to clear the FBO um, that we're... Let's uh, do that outside of this. We'll say clear FBO, first past FBO. And that clearing isn't what got rid of that sphere. If we remove this, you can see the sphere still isn't there. It's the fact that we moved it inside this with FBO bound. So everything we're drawing is ending up in that FBO. But we've got three attachments, and currently um, it, what, what's going into the first attachment is what we saw here. Um, we want to go now to our fragment stage. And actually fill those different um, textures with the data we were going to use them for. So it was positions, normals, and albedo. So what we're going to do is we're going to rip all of this out, almost all of this out. Yeah, let's, let's paste this in some misc file for a second. We'll come back to that. Um, actually, take the whole function. Just so I don't lose it. And then we're going to return three values from this um, new fragment shader. Say values. The first one is going to be the albedo, which is just whatever we're pulling out of the texture. The next thing is the, um, well, we wanted the positions and the normals. And then it was the, the last one was the albedo, I think. Let's go have a look. Yes, our FBO goes position, normal, albedo. Okay, cool. So, down here, we will go frag position, which is in world space, frag normal, which is um, in world space, and our albedo. And then we're going to remove everything else, and none of these uniforms are interesting anymore, so we'll get rid of all of those. And this is the only stuff we need. So our fragment shader has just gone way down, because all we're doing is we're channeling the data into our three attachments on our FBO. So we'll compile this, and then it's going to throw an error because uh, it's going to freak out because down here we're still passing in... Oh, wait a second. That's not right. Uh, oh, yeah, I actually removed too much up here. There was one thing I didn't want to remove. And that was the albedo texture. So 
let's get rid of the light position and the specular map because we're not even using the specular map, so that shouldn't have been there anyway. Um, recompile this. Unknown keyword argument spec map. Yes, okay, cool. All right, so we'll say that's this is the crash I expected because down here we're passing in lots of things. Um, I don't know where spec, max, spec map is coming from though, so we will have to find that. Um, we're not using a camera position anymore, I'm pretty sure. So we can get rid of that. And we're not using a light position anymore. So we can get rid of that. Um, I'm not sure if now is being used in any of these. Oh yeah, that's being passed into the uh, vertex stage, so we won't mess with that. World to view and view to clip are okay. Let's say continue. Um, something is still trying to pass stuff up and we can go and look at what that is. So this is the upload uniforms um, call. So we, we're doing two things here. Rather, originally we had loads of draw calls and then it was getting very expensive to upload uniforms uh, on every single draw call. So we had a function here where we just set all the uniforms once and then because those are um, memoized or cached between every draw, um, we could do all these draws without having to reload, re-upload those uniforms again. Um, so this is the draw method that's being called. Let's go find that. Um, and it's in particle. And then here we are. So specular map and scale. I, we're probably still using scale. So let's just go with this. Say continue and see what freaks out next. Um, the symbol albedo is unidentified. Whoa, wait a second. No. In the wrong one. Let's get rid of this. Uh, we've still got a specular map around somewhere. Down here. We compile that. Say continue again. We're just going to keep on saying continue until things work. And it looks like they are. Oh, I'm hitting all the wrong keys. Okay. So now I think we're drawing the right thing into those buffers. We've got some floating point buffers and we're just dumping data in there. Now, what we could do is just, ooh, is here, we'll say draw text and we'll just try the position texture. Whoa, okay, bloody hell. Um, Yes, this thing's giving me a shit ton of warnings that um, I haven't implemented <laughs> uh, freeing samplers yet, and it's creating a sampler on every single call, so I'll probably stop that. But what we're seeing here are positions in world space um, as colors, and they're block colors because uh, color can only be, be between zero and one, so they're getting clamped, but this is values in world space with some nasty wrapping on the edge, so we'll have to, we'll have to do something about that. We will. So we'll get rid of that. But I'm pretty happy now that there are some, some values being written in there. Let's quickly do it for the others, even though we're getting loads of spam in the... So position text, normal text. So these are all the normals for the spheres. And then albedo text should just be... Um, oh, is bugger all? That's interesting. That was one I was expecting to have something sensible in. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll come back to that. We'll find out what it is soon. It's in render then. Okay, so we grab the albedo texture. Have I just stopped passing that up somewhere? Let's check the diff and see what I've done. So bam, um, albedo, 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 albedo. Something should have been passing it up. Sampler of thing. Yeah, they're still there. I haven't removed them, so I don't know what I've done yet, but it'll become clear in time. Oh, goodness sake. Right, okay, so that's our first pass. So now we have deferred the actual drawing. There's no proper rendering, visible rendering going on here. We've deferred that till the next stage. Um, so now we've got to create a new pipeline. And this will be our second pass. 
And it is going to... We're not going to uh, worry about having a vertex um, stage because what we're going to do is we're going to draw a full screen quad and we're going to use um, the data from our textures to fill in. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do that in a second. I need to look at chat because I've basically been monologuing for a while. I need to drink some of this coffee because otherwise I'm not going to make it through the two hours. Let us see what is happening. Um... Diablo, there are some there are some proper wizards out there. There really are. Um, there's just some absolutely amazing projects. And, uh, <laughs> AK Garam saying, uh, Diablo, you're doing too much work. Stop if you stop doing if you stop doing work and start uh, tweaking Emacs, all day, it'll look better. Um, sorry, Karam, I'm not actually sure what you, uh, which projects do you work on, dude. Sorry, uh, Diablo. Um, the highlighting of the um, expression being evaluated is just slime. Uh, that's what happens automatically when you do Control C, Control C on any form. It's going to flash. Um, yep. And if you do Control K, it'll do the whole buffer, but it doesn't flash then. But yeah, it's all all part of the package. Nothing to do with me there. It's good to see you again, Paul Pimp. It's nice to have you back. <laughs> One episode, what a gap. Alright. Okay, so... See, I'm, it's, it's funny. I, even though we've implemented single-stage uh, pipelines, because it's so new, I feel, like, hesitant to touch it. But this should be fine. This should be fine. So what we're going to do is we'll do... Um, So this is going to be our deferred shading frag. And there will be some values. Yeah, there's a VEC2 that's passed in, which is the UV. Um, Shimera says, I skipped out uh, Treehouse last Sunday. I absolutely did. Uh, for those who don't know, Shimera does a stream called Treehouse um, every Sunday. It's awesome. Go check it out. It's uh, a lot swearier than mine, which is uh, but, but very, very good. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry about that, dude. I was exhausted. I actually, I know that that's not entirely true. Um, I was tired, but I was also just playing loads of War for the Overworld because I bought it over the weekend and it was like, new Dungeon Keeper! And so I was very happy. The ending, shit, but the, the actual game is just... It's, it's DK2 how I remember it rather than how it actually was, which is lovely. Anyway. Um, man, I love Dungeon Keeper 2. That was just one of the great games. Um, UV, which is a VEC2, and then we're going to pass in some uniforms. And we're going to need some samplers. We're going to have a position sampler. A normal sampler. And an albedo sampler. Will I regret these long names? Maybe. Um, and then it's going to complain that nothing is going on inside this. Oh yeah, I'm actually writing uniforms instead of uniform. Thank you. Error checking. And we'll just return red for now. That compiles. Then this should compile. And then, back in our main loop, we're going to dispatch this. So we're going to go map G. Um, oh, we're going to need one more thing as well. Uh, we're going to be mapping over the second pass using a um, a buffer stream, uh, an empty buffer stream. So, and the reason we have this is just to give us effectively it gets turned into a single point, which is then expanded to a quad by magic in the back end. But all you have to do is create an empty buffer stream, and it's fine. Um, so we will go and do that. Let's go and define a variable for it. I'm aware I'm, I'm moving kind of quickly in this one. I'm not really being doing a great job at explaining things, but I'd kind of sorry about that. It, we just I want to see how much ground we can cover in this one, and we can always go into detail another time. Um, it'd be a nice one if if we can round off the year with this. That'd be quite good fun. So. What are we going to do? We're going to make a buffer stream uh, with no um, GPU arrays. 
And I've got to set the, remember to set the primitive to points. I, what I think I might do actually is, see the default primitive is triangles at the moment, but what I'll do is I'll make it so if you pass in nil, um, that it'll make it into a points stream. I think that makes sense. I'll have to, I'll have to monkey around so that the uh, signature isn't confusing, but yeah. It says this. Now we should be able to compile this. It's freaking out. Okay. The buffer stream passed to second pass contains points. However, I was expecting triangles. What do you mean you're expecting triangles? You shouldn't be expecting triangles. You're a single stage pipeline. You can either change the type of the primitives. Oh yeah, do I need to? Oh, right, okay, yeah. Ha, huh. maybe that's something I should do as well, actually, is I've got to go and tell this thing that it's meant to be taking points. And then if I say continue, then we've got red, cool. So yeah, that, that actually needs a bit of work. Make sure that this is working, good, cool. So we are live and this is gonna be our second pass. So everything's getting written into buffers and now we're here. Now it's time to go and bring back a lot of the stuff we were doing here. So how we will do this is yet to be known. Um, let's just take all of this. I've got to actually remember the, what is it? Um, alt equals, no, alt Q. Yeah, it goes and reformats the um, indentation and all this kind of stuff. I've got to remember that because that's way easier than selecting the whole thing and hitting tab, which I've been doing for years now. So I'm gonna have to get that out of muscle memory. Uh, right, so. Um, we're drawing a quad. We're looking up into those textures we've saved. So this actually stays the same. Um, Fragpos. Uh, that we were using before um, is going to just be taken from the POS sampler. This is from the albedo sampler. And the frag norm is from the normal sampler. Whoop, like that. And then, oh, it's not frag norm, it's frag normal. And it was frag POS though. And then that might be it. Now we need a couple of other things. We're going to need a light position. Um, Basically, the stuff we ripped out. Light position and camera, camera position. We're not using the specular map anywhere, so we don't need to add that back. So for now, we need to re-add this. And then we get rid of the blue and recompile. It's going to freak out. Okay, why? Um, there are no applicable methods for GLSL function. Net minus, uh, when called with a VEC3 and a VEC4, in uh, minus fragpos from lightpos. And that will be because, da -da -da, um, yes, our fragment position and normal before were uh, vector threes. So let's just turn them, let's swizzle them back into vector threes. Invalid index six for simple array, blah, 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 blah. Should be an integer below six. Oh, that isn't great. Oh, we had a bug like this before. What the fuck? Yee. I don't know what that was, and I really don't want it to be plaguing us today. Um, oops. Let's compile this. Let's say play. Oh, there it is again. Okay. Um, what is this going to be from? Um, this is going to be. This is going to be. This is a. This is a Kepler bug, and it's to do with how it's caching something. Probably uniform IDs. Um, nope. Oh, I really don't want to have to restart this. Don't make me do it. Um, okay. We may, we may still be live. What I, what I was doing there, see, that's janky. So there's a couple of things that happened there. A bug happened. That's the first problem. Well, the second problem was that in the version of Keppel that I'm currently using, uh, which is master, so it's n which isn't the stuff that's going to go in the next quick list release, but um, is soon, so I've got to find this bug. In the, in the current master, 
it won't recompile the pipeline um, unless there have been changes in the source code of one of the functions that are involved in that pipeline. So it was to avoid over recompilation and slow slow builds, basically. Um, and that worked, but it also means that see that shouldn't if there's if when you run it you hit an error on upload on the on the actual initialization it should not like cache ah there's a dirty flag basically that it's setting that it shouldn't that um yeah something's getting set that it shouldn't be internal state bugs i need to fix it i will have to write up an issue report for that later because i can't get it around my head right now so anyway apparently this is doing things and the reason we're not seeing anything yet is we're not passing in these so let's lose the REPL for a second we've got map g here um we're going to need samplers for these excuse me because we've currently only got textures it's very simple to do and we'll do that in a second but we also have um light pos which i think is just light pos yep and we have that's changing all the time probably and we have um camera pos Hmm. It's probably let's go and have a look at draw and see what oh no, see what we're using in here. Oh yes, I deleted that code, didn't I? Smart Chris. Right, let's go down here and see what it was. Um Oh there we go. Position of camera. Alright, so that needs to be passed in. Camera should be in this scope somewhere. Oh, we're just using current camera, cool. Position of the current camera. And the light position was position of the ball. Okay, cool, so we will do this. And at least that bit is working. Um, just to make sure everything is still, still running. It's kind of disconcerting when you don't see anything for a while. So I'm just gonna do that to make sure everything's still alive. It's back there, something's happening. There is tons of work going on right now, but we just get seeing none of it. Okay, so last bit is that we need samplers for all of these. So def var, uh, position sampler, and of course you would not normally have these as uh, global variables, but it's handy for us when we're just messing around like this. And go to render. Oh, we can do it in here actually, can't we? Um, set f position sampler to be um, sample and how are we going to sample things we are going to sample the position texture with well, we could just leave it like this but I'm going to specify the wrapping as well which is going to be clamp um, to edge probably yep can't remember the difference between clamp to edge and clamp to border. Can anyone remind me? Done. Cool. Now we have some samplers. So if we go and look at position sampler and uh, normal sampler and yeah it's just it's just samplers it's just the things that are going to sample from these textures we already had so all is well there now if we go back maybe we can get back to where we were a little while ago um by calling i can't remember the names of things whoops yeah here post sampler um which is going to be position sam so I keep abbreviating things inconsistently, but whatever. Uh, normal sampler. Normal Sam. Um, and uh, albedo. Well, that's wrong, but it's really interesting. <laughs> Look at that garbage. Weird. Hmm. Why that is 
look at that, that's cool. Another good point as well, actually, is we didn't need to use a floating point texture for the uh, for the albedo at all. We could have just used a normal 8-bit texture. Cause... But this, this nonsense looks almost like we've got garbage data in that texture, which might line up with what we saw earlier. Remember that we weren't seeing... No, we weren't seeing anything in there. That was... Hmm. Hmm. Some weirdness. There is some weirdness. Let's see what happens if we go and just stick red in there. Wait, no, not here. We're getting something though, we're getting close. Right, it's this, this thing. This is definitely a vector four. Oh, okay. Wait a second. Maybe. Oh, wait. Now it's fine? Ah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that was, and I don't like it. Maybe I hadn't recompiled this in a while? And, like, recompiled it when I was making the changes? Not sure. But anyway, that's what I was hoping to see, is the original scene we had. So what's happened is we've saved, we've saved into three different buffers. We've saved the positions, we've saved the normals, and we've saved the albedo. And then on the next pass, we've just drawn a full screen quad, wherever we are, down here. And then we've unpacked those values from those buffers and used them just like we were using them before. Um, and that gives us, yeah, that gives us what we had, which is awesome, except for the fact that now it's deferred. So we're, we're doing already work on, we're running this fragment shader on less um fragments because we're only we're only rendering two triangles on this second pass so we're only um dealing with one fragment for every position and that's cool but ultimately useless we already had this so we want to do something cool with it and the way we do lights if we just look at a light the light information here we pa pass in a light position and we've got a um camera position now uh, we're probably not going to use the camera position much the main thing is the light position um, and we have the fragment position in world space. Light position and frag position in world space. And we've also got a normal. So if we take the normal to the surface and the vector to a light, say the light's out here, the vector towards the light, we take the dot product of that, it's going to give us a value between 0 and 1 uh, that we can use for shading. That's just basic diffuse kind of a shading thing. We saturate that, clamp it between 0 and 1. Um, but... We have to do this for every light. So you can see down here, where's... Um, I should refactor the light stuff out into its own function. Because it's hard to see what's going on here. Um, calc diffuse. So this is the diffuse color. It needs diffuse and attenuation fudged. And a light color, yes, we've got that. And then a direction to light, a vector to light. Yeah, this whole thing here. We'll just take that. Uh, we're gonna move it up here. Doot. I'm gonna wrap it all in a let. So let's uh, go all the way down this list, just pushing everything into place. I love structured code editing. Probably the thing I miss most in, well, no, there's a load of things I miss in other languages, but yeah. So this is our calculating our light. Oh, what, what isn't it like? Light pos is undefined. Um, yes. So we're going to need to pass in light pos, which is a vector three. Let's just copy this. Come on now. Light pos and what was the other thing? There's going to be more. Oh yeah, there's frag pos. Vector 3. And let's swap those positions. Compile that. Vector light is undefined. Okay. Uh, vector light. Oh yes, of course, because we need to do let star rather than regular let. Um, compile that again. Frag normal is undefined. Yes, that's true. We do need to pass in the frag normal. Um, we'll just get rid of that for now. Frag normal is a vector 3. And now that compiles, cool. And so we're gonna go down here and instead of all this diffuse stuff, 
we're going to just do diffuse color is calc diffuse passing in the frag pos the frag normal and the light pos let's just move these down like that and all is well in the world and everything's still working so that's good and we can see here if we were to return some other color that affects everything everything is still live and we're still working cool coffee i said i was gonna have coffee and i didn't mm. oh thank god i needed that cool so we have ambient color and diffuse color and that's all that so but the thing is as you can see here this fun is a function of um a light position so we're going to need to run this for every single light um maybe in a loop and that's not great uh glsl shaders in general don't like branches don't like loops it's not very friendly um it'd be cool if we can do this in another way if we can re structure the problem um in a way that's more friendly to the gpu one of the things that's very interesting is we can obviously in like have a fall off we have this attenuation is how far the light travels it's traveling quite far here at the moment but you can see that this stuff is really brightly lit and only things that are coming close all of this is being lit by ambient light if we take that off actually where is it where's that ambient light pick this down to zero you can see really what's being affected that's going to look terrible on the stream but there are some things here that are just about lit and then stuff around here is well lit um and so that we have a we have a distance a maximum distance that the light is tra the light is traveling in our simulation right and so that defines a sphere so what if we were to render a load of spheres which represent the lights and only do the lighting inside those spheres maybe we'll have a thing so that is roughly i think what we have to do and this is called um lighting volumes or something it's in here basically i, ha I haven't i haven't done this before but i liked the idea so basically this is stuff we've done so far we've packed some buffers um and then we've done the lighting calculation in a separate stage this was their one they had a 3d model loaded so doing a bunch of those and they had a bunch of lights and they were talking about the same problem that i've just been talking about but the goal is we want to get to something like this where we just got lights everywhere hundreds and hundreds of lights which would just be way too slow if we do this in a loop um and what they were saying was um this example above was uh, kind of getting people in the right headspace uh the appropriate approach to use light volumes is to render actual spheres scaled by the light volume radius the center of these spheres are positioned at the light source position and it is scaled by the light volume radius um the sphere exactly encompasses the light's visible volume so that's like the attenuation like the light stops where the sphere stops um and then we use largely the same deferred fragment shader like this stuff now for rendering the sphere and as um the rendered sphere produces fragments um it's so then we're only drawing we're only running the fragment shader where the light is and so we can we're gonna render all this stuff once into a load of buffers then we're gonna render a load of spheres um and do like we're doing here with this light information stuff this basic shading for each of those spheres but it'll only render the pixels that need to be affected by that light because it's only going to render on that sphere and then we're going to do that a bunch of times and composite all together um, which happens just naturally if we draw a bunch of times everything is going to get additively blended into the same thing um, so that sounds possible we do need to draw a bunch of spheres and so we're going to need a bunch of we're going to need to load a sphere information and we could do that with instancing again um, which would be quite cool so we could then we could technically have so we're using instancing to draw 64,000 cones and stuff lying around here and then we're going to use instancing to make a load of spheres so we, we do one sphere uh, of unit size and then we can just pack all that information into a buffer and that should be it that, that should be everything we actually need um the other what so 
I could pass the data up for the sphere as um, per instance data, just like we did for this, which I probably will do because I've already done it and I know it works. The other way is we can use a UBO, a uniform buffer object. We haven't done those yet, so maybe we should do them. Yeah. Yeah, let, no, let's do that. Um, we're not going to need to do anything that... So basically, I know that there are problems with the regards to data layout in UBOs in Keppel for structs. For, for structs of certain layers, uh, like of certain fields. And I know we're not going to touch that, so I think this is going to work fine. So basically, we can use this as an example. Yay, everything works. Um, we're not going to do any of the things that I know break. And so I can silently fix those, and this video will still look good. Whew. Lots of gibberish. So how do we do this? Where do we do it? I don't know. So we're going to end up changing this pass because instead of drawing a quad, we're going to be drawing, um, yeah, we're going to be drawing a sphere and then we're going to need to calculate some um, new positions within this, but we can get the fragment, the geo frag position. And I think that's in window space coordinates. So we'll need to scale it down, uh, divide that by the size of the viewport. This should work. This should work. I think I think we, I think this will be okay. Um, it's going to get a bit more complicated first, though. So we're now going to have a deferred. Um, oh, I don't want to break this. So I'm going to do this. Um, volume pass. And we're going to. We're going to keep this around. But then we'll replace it later. So we're going to use the same fragment shader. We're going to use a new vertex shader, um, which is going to be very similar actually to this. Really similar. Yeah, let's take this and chop it down. Um, light sphere vert. So we're going to be passing in some vertex data. And this is where we passed in our instance data before, but we want to use an UBO this time. So we're feeling brave. Um, so how are we going to do that? We won't need we won't need a lot of these things. We won't need now. We won't need scale. Um, we will need these three, I think. Um, we're going to get the sphere into clip space, and then we're not going to pass any other values along. So we really don't need that. Um, so basically, the fragment shader is going to take nothing soon. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. So, right, for, for now, just for compatibility, we're going to have to pass some vector two. And the reason I, I, I'm, I'm worrying out loud right now is I'm trying to continue using this deferred shading frag shader, like this guy. But this takes a UV. And we're not going to be getting the UV uh, from here anymore. We're going to be calculating it from... Um, from GL frag position. Let's let's look this up because actually we can probably update this now. We can do this. We can work this out. So, GLSL uh, frag position. Built-in variables. Fragment shader inputs. No GL frag chord. That was exactly what I wanted back here. All right, this guy um, contains window relative coordinates of the current fragment. Nice. So. I'm going to need a couple of things. I'm going to need the window size. Um, so in my my terminology, in Keppel terminology, that's viewport size. Um, that's going to be a VEC2. Ah, oh, we hit this bug again. Okay. So adding, adding uniforms. Adding uniforms is causing a problem? That's fucking weird. One, two, three, four, five, six. Valid index eight. So you've got some off by one thing there. That's very strange. Very strange. I think we're going to get this a couple more times yet. This is really annoying. We'll work it out, but it is. He's pissing me off. Hmm.
Okay. Again, if I just dump some value here and recompile and say continue, oh, everything works. That's really annoying. What was it doing? It's... Uh... No, I can't work it out. I, I, I'll need to... I'll be doing some testing for this offline. But um, anyway, we're passing in the viewport size. We'll just have to pretend this works for now. Um... So where do we call this second pass thing? We call that over here. So we want to pass in a VP size, and that is going to be the viewport. Now, I want to get my terminology right. I believe that viewport dimensions of the current viewport is going to be a list, but I do viewport resolution. When you see resolution in, in Keppel, it's going to be a vector. When you see dimensions, it's going to be a list. Uh, it kind of matches to array dimensions, which are always lists, and um, yeah, screen resolution tends to, like, I don't know. I, I treated that with an effector. I needed, I needed something separate. So this will do. This will, um, this will be what we use here. So that is now getting passed up. So we now want to calculate the UV coordinates. Remember that we are just drawing one big quad here at the moment. Um, so we want to take our current, the position of the current fragment, whichever one it is, um, which is in window space, and we want to turn it into a number between 0 and 1. And the way we do that is we take the VP size and we divide it by um, the GL frag chord. There we go. Right. So then, let's have a think. Is that the right, right way around? No, it's probably this, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. So if we do this, oh, what did it, didn't it like? There is no applicable method for the GLSL function divide when called with vec4 and vec2. Oh, GL frag chord is a vec4. I didn't know that. XY. And it still works. Sweet. So now we can take out this UV. When we recompile this, we're probably going to get an error saying that the previous stage outputs no longer match the inputs of this stage. But it didn't. Oh, kind of strange. Uh, but we don't need... No, it's just kind of forgiving about that, is it? That is rather surprising. Ooh, no. That's not going to work. Ah, bugger. Okay. Anyway, we've done the math that we need to get this bit. So it really doesn't matter what we pass in now. So down here, we can just pass in uh, 0, 0, and that's fine. Scale is still an issue. Scale. Do we use scale? Probably. Let's, uh, let's get it back in here. Where's scale? Yeah, we pass in scale as a float. Okay. We will keep the compiler happy. Inst data is not around. Inst data. Oh yes, we don't have that. This is, see, this is the shader we're using for positioning all of our um, particles. So we don't need to be doing the particle data stuff anymore. We should just be doing this. It's called P data, right? Oh, I'm confusing myself. Right, it was called inst data. That was it. It was only used in that one place. Okay, so that's fine. Recompile again. And now this compiles. So Lightsphere Vert is now compiling. Whether it's sane or not is something we'll see later. So this should now be this. And it takes a single argument of GPNT, which is a struct. Compile that. So we got a volume pass. Nice. Okay. Um, God, this is one of these ones where you have to spend a long time just coding before you get to see anything. But we're in only approaching nine o'clock now, so we're we're still good. Let's see what's going on, in chat, because I have missed a lot. Oh man, already I can tell it's not good. I just scrolled up and I saw XML. And Java already, like whatever is going on in here is just a problem. Right. Um, UFOs. Yes. Um, Chimera is working on Android crap now. Dude, why are you doing Android stuff? Like, I'm stupid enough to do that, but what are you doing? One in uh, two per edit splice. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, he's just doing general app dev. Oh, interesting. Um, Daria said made a small app with Clojure went pretty smooth. That's interesting. Is, is that actually running? Because um, Clojure is based on just standard JVM stuff, right? Rather than Dalvik. So how are you running it over there? Or is it a Clojure script kind of thing? Okay, Karam saying, well, XML is the list of the 90s. Yep, that's it. That's that's why the rest of this chat went to shit. <laughs> we, we have found patient zero. Good lord. Um, yep, and then the discussion goes about as you would expect. <laughs> Yeah, and then it, and then we hit the bottom, back into sanity. And now our camera's here. Yo, our camera. What uh, what else do you suggest develop an app with? Yeah, I mean, you end up writing a little bit of Java regardless. Of course, again, like with the work I do, uh, I'm slightly biased and I like the Fuse stuff. Um, just from the point of view of like UI is horrifying. Making nice UI is just difficult in in most things. And yeah. So, uh, so I'm a. Uh, it's weird. I I work at a place where I actually believe what they're doing. So, um, I'm being a corporate shill for you right now. There we go. Um, Kotlin. Ah, oh, yes. the The problem with the pro the problem the the thing that bugs me as someone who works on loads of Android stuff is that Kotlin fixes nothing for me. Absolutely nothing, because the problem with Android is the API. Almost all of the time, like 90% of the stuff I'm dealing with on Android that suck are down to the differences in the API between different versions, or just the API is a massive oop shit fest, or whatever the things are. It's just a nightmare world. Oh yeah, and the documentation's always out of date, and the things that they have documented are documented wrong. It just goes on and on and on, and oh, we implement the standard, but you implement it incorrectly, so that it actually doesn't behave properly anymore, and all this kind of stuff. Like, that's the problems with Android for me. And Kotlin fixes nothing. Like, any, like, a, a changing, I mean, it's a better language, there's no doubt, but the language isn't the fundamental problem. Like, you can write, oh, you can write boring Java and get by, but, oh. And, let's say, uh, the stuff I do at work, I only jump over into Java for specific features. Like, we we have this foreign encode thing. I won't rant about that for now, but it's cool. Um, yeah. Alcama's uh, saying, yeah, it's plain sugar, so I agree, and there are like 10 ways to do the same stuff incorrectly. Yeah, totally, man. I, 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 sorry, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't meaning to lecture. I'll school you, boy. But it's, um, no, it's, it's just pain seeping out of me. I have similar, uh, different flavored horror stories for iOS. Those people just, oh, ugh. Anyway. <sighs> We're in this plan now, Chris. It's all okay. It's all okay. Everything's parents. Um, so... What kind of mess were we making here? We, we worked, we uh, updated the UV stuff. We, we need to draw a sphere. That's, that's basically it. We need to draw a sphere, and then we need to only render inside that sphere. And that's going to be cool. And we're going to put the sphere around wherever this um, light is. We're going to put it at this position, and we're going to scale it so it is the size of the light. Um, so what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to do a couple of things here. Um... We're actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say that this whole thing just throws away all this calculation does and just renders red for now. And we'll get to why in a minute. Um, we're going to need a sphere. We need, we need a mesh to draw for our sphere. So let's go put that somewhere. Um, actually, we... Yeah. Sphere, radius 1 is that. <laughs> um, sphere data is just going to be that thing. So we're going to take this and put it in play with verts. 
not explaining things right now. Oh well. So um, yeah, there's some helper methods that are already in this project from way back that um, we'll go and call one of our other libraries and get the data, uh, get some GPU arrays containing data for a sphere um, with a given radius. And then it takes that and makes a buffer stream using it, which is really helpful. And then it um, caches it um, in this hash table, which means we can call sphere as many times as we like. And as long as the parameters, the arguments were the same to this function, you'll get the same exact sphere data back, like the same object. They will be EQ which means they are pointer equal. Um, so yeah, that's just, just so we're not leaking stuff everywhere. We can just go through and clear out this table at the end if we want to. We never have yet, but that is the theory. Cool, so we've got some sphere data. Um, so we are going to run this volume pass. We'll just try and get it drawing for now. So let's do map g volume pass um, passing in our sphere data and then we need to provide all of the correct arguments so what do our different things need um, our vertex stage oh we, we made a new vertex stage didn't we scale all this kind of stuff um, scale model to world world to view view to clip there are some things around that will provide that um, I'm going to do a quick... Mm, shall I do a bit of refactoring now and just fuck with things? Yes, and maybe no. Um, yeah. This is an optimization we simply don't need anymore. Um, I should have removed it before this stream started, so sorry about that. Whoa. Right, this. Yes. Uh, we'll have to come back to that in a minute. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. That's maybe why I didn't do it. Okay. So now drawer is going to need to take a camera. So let's go and inspect drawer. What we're going to do is... Okay, so once you've defined a generic um, function in Lisp, it's you, you can't have... A, generic function implementations with different argument lengths. So if we start changing the argument length here, it's going to freak out and say, hey, they don't match. Um, so what we're going to do is just quickly undefine this function. And it's here. It's a function. Bam. We're just going to unbind it. Um, now that's done, we can go and redefine this. So we're going to also going to pass in a camera. Um, and camera is probably of type as well, right? Yeah. So we will then pass in camera of type camera. Compile that. Now everything's happy. Um, we're going to look at all the other places that drawer is called from, which is here. We have to pass in a camera, um, and that camera is going to be, what's it going to be? It's going to be current camera, I guess. Oh yeah, where is it actually implemented? It's here and here. We need to pass in a camera there. I think that's okay. So that is compiled. That is compiled. Back here where we draw things. Oops. Current camera here. That compiles. This actually doesn't compile because I've got some garbage there when I realized what I was going to do. Say continue. Everything still works. Hooray. Good. Now we can pretend that didn't happen and carry on. Um... We want a lot of this stuff. We want scale, world, view, view to clip, and all that kind of thing. World to view, view to clip, model to world. That should be here. Lovely. Right. So what else do we need? Render. We need... Nope, that was all that the vertex stage is going to need. Scale, model to world, world to clip, world to view. View to clip. And then our deferred shading is going to need the rest of the stuff. Oh, right. Yeah, this is a vertex stage, so that's wrong. Um, oh, this is going to be rather confusing. If I just make this return red right now, 
what's it going to look like? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's one big quad, so that's not going to work. Man, I'm just trying to make it obvious when we draw this sphere what's actually happening. Hmm. Oh, well. I don't know what's going to happen. So then it's all of these values. For the frag. For the vert. There's no duplication there. Cool. So I do that, what happens? This variable thing is not bound. Oh, true. Yeah, we don't... <laughs> We don't need that, and camera is the current camera, and thing, yes, get model, oh, right, okay, so we need to calculate the model to world space for our sphere, for our light. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll just take this and we'll, we'll roll with it. Well, it's going to have no rotation, so we don't need this bit, which means we don't need the matrix multiply, which means we just need a translation, and this just needs a position. So this is going to be some light position. We'll put it 0, 0, 0 for now. And... Oh, we're just hacking everything. See what happens. Hack the planet. Ah, <sighs> okay, yes. Oh, man, there is... I thought I was going to be able to do this in stages, but it's not happening. So I'm just going to have to kill this. I'm going to... Um, commit this quickly, even though it's a mess. Just, be just because I'm nervous I'm about to fuck this up. So we get rid of the second pass. That's gone. Um, means we don't need this anymore. We can... Move these around, so we got the vertex and then the fragment shader. Uh, we've got our volume pass here, that's good. We can now go and update everything so it makes sense. Like, there is no UV being passed in here anymore. Um, there's no UV being passed out of here, so we don't need a values, it's just returning one thing. Ah! Oh. Sorry, I was really hoping I could do this in stages and we can see, oh, here's the volume of the sphere and all this kind of stuff. But that's not happening. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. Oh, yeah, and we've still got everything set up as points. We're not in points anymore. Right. There appears to be a unit sphere down there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it red. It is not red. What has happened? Oh yeah, this is uh, still using the wrong deferred fragment shader, that's why. There we go. Now it's red. It's just red. So if we take away this, it'll probably start flickering for reasons. And now we're just going to make it red. And now we need to, like, this needs to have some size. And we will be filling this in soon. Like, let's get, uh, we'll use scale. We've got scale already, that's perfect. Okay, so we can make it size 10. Um, now let's see what we get if, let's, see, let's go. Go bigger. We need to see it on the stream. There we go. What happens if we remove this? It's like a little porthole. I'm not sure if you guys can see that very well. Let's uh, do 80. Maybe that helps. We're rendering a sphere. And then... Everywhere the sphere is, we're going and doing all the look up and shading that we were doing before. So it's essentially like we've created a mask, a circular mask. Um, so this is what we're looking through so this is basically this is the area if this is a light these are all the things that are going to be affected by that light more or less we're going to have to do some other calculations um, yes because right now there's some things that aren't right here Ooh, that's a good point actually because we can see really far away in here have I misunderstood the tutorial because we only want to be illuminating the things that are within a certain depth, right? Huh. This can't be right. I think I fucked this up. Oh no. 
10 past 9 and I didn't understand the premise. <laughs> the center of these spheres are positioned at the light source's position and are scaled by the light volume radius. The scale exactly encompasses the light's visible volume. This is where the trick comes in. We use, we use largely the same deferred fragment shader for rendering the sphere. Have a look at their deferred. Yeah, this is the bit. This is where they look things up in the G buffer and, and do that. Oh, wait, though. No, this will be okay. Right, so what the reason it's kind of weird right now is this the light is down, actually, the light we have is down here. So it's illuminating things that are far away. Whereas if this was, yeah, I, th I think this, I think this is going to be okay. I just need to position it and scale it based on the attenuation. That's hmm, hmm. It's a weird one. Oh, I think someone's on the door. One second, I will be back in just a tick. Hello, back again. Oh, I've got Firefox debugger came up. Didn't need that. Right. Hello. All right. Okay, so I think this is still going to be all right. I'm freaking out because I'm seeing further away than I would. But that's okay because the reason I'm seeing further away is there's light further away. It doesn't take care of... Oh, I don't know. We're still going to have a final pass where we actually do all the ambient lighting as well. So I guess really, this should be set to ambient like that. This is interesting. Okay, so now, like, where do we position this? This sphere's position is going to be um, the position of the ball. The ball is our current light source. So position of ball is a vector three. Okay, so let's take that and add um, position of the ball, and then a zero on the end, so it's a vector four. Do this, and now it's following it around. And so what we're effectively saying is, we only want to do the shading calculation, like these are the only particles we want to even try computing the um, lighting for because this is as far as the light will get. Now we haven't actually scaled this right now based on the, dis the attenuation, but we could, and that's what we have to do. Um, so, oh boy. And then we've got to do this with hundreds of them. That, that'll actually be the easy bit, I think. Um, that'll be fun. I just need to get this bit right. So this is the scale. How do we do that? So, it's all based on our attenuation function, really. Um, and that is a horrible mess. That's a fudgy thing. So I currently, um, yeah, I take the distance and I square it and I multiply it by some fudge factor, which is constant. Um, and then yeah, it's one over that. So the distance the light can reach. Basically, it's when does this reach zero? Um, or effectively nil. It's whenever this gets high, I guess. Yeah, whenever this gets... We can say whenever this gets to around a thousand, um, you're going to have 0 0.001 of colour. It's really kind of meaningless at that point. Um, so our size is going to be based on this in some way. Okay. So. Hmm. Oh, fudge is no point. One. So. 
for this to be a thousand, we're saying the uh, Do, 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 do. What, we, what are we looking for? What are we looking for here? Hmm. No, I think I've got that wrong. Oops, wrong type. <laughs> what just happened? Tea fucking pots. Nice. I agree, but uh, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Second vid says unavailable. What's happening? Oh, is this uh, to do with Chimera stuff? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's teapots. Wicked. That's cool. Nice, nice, nice. <sighs> okay, so I guess we really play with this function. Um, this attenuation thing. At what distance does this drop down to something stupid? Um, yeah, let's just play with some values. That's the easiest way to do this. And it would be even easier if we were able to call GPU functions, which we are. So, uh, attenuation fudged. is something like this. And yep, we need a light pass and a frag pass, so. Roughly this. Okay. That compiles. Um, let's go and use that in here. There's frag pass, light pass. As always, please do shout out questions. I know I'm, I'm not being super clear right now because I'm kind of learning. <laughs> I'm learning as I go, but I'm happy to to yell about what I'm trying to do. Um, right, so that's still working. Now let's see if I'm on a branch where we can use this uh, this nice feature where we can say not 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 and not let's do one zero zero. Oh, we're not uh, we're not on a branch where we can call GPU functions. No, why why did I not uh, go onto that branch today? God damn it. Um. Fine, so we're gonna have to refactor this into a regular Lisp function and just test it from our side. So defun test is gonna take two things. It's gonna take this and this and some fudge and we're gonna be doing a v3 length and this is going to be, actually, we don't really need to do this with vector three. Ah, doesn't matter, keep it the same. Keep it the same. V3 minus one divided by light distance. Okay. Okay, so at that point it's very high. Um, at ten, so ten. 20, it's 2.5, 50, 0.4, 100, we're down at 0.1, yeah, that makes sense. So, 100 squared is 10,000 divided by 1,000. Um, wait a second, I got that wrong, haven't I? Oh yeah, 100 squared, 10,000. That takes it down to 10, 1 over 10, 0 0.1. Yes, right, so. Yeah, so around a thousand, we're getting down to be fairly small, and maybe, maybe inconsequential at that point, as far as what is visible color-wise. 
So anything that's less than really, but that's light distance is a thousand before the it stops having an effect. Yeesh, that is a long way. Because I mean, this is eighty, so we're not going to be minimizing the number of particles if like this is a hundred. So. Well, I mean, I suppose the first thing is that I'm using... I'm, my light does travel a very long way at the moment. So if I go and fuck around with my attenuation... Um, let's just bring this in a bit. Uh, if I make this smaller... Oh, no, not that. If I bring that down to there. And the reason I'm going to do this is because... Um, is because we're about to add a lot of lights. Yeah, so... So how are we going to do this? How are we going to do it? Yeah. My brain has just gone a blank on me. That's really annoying. Have a coffee. Look at the chat. We'll work out the next bit. <laughs> What's going on? Ah, oh, good grief. There's still some there's still some XML go talk going on. I'm not repeating any of it on the chat. We let these things die. <laughs> cool. Right. Um This bit, my brain's gone blank on, and I don't know why. So I'm actually just going to continue on. We've got a rough idea of the attenuation and the size and all that kind of stuff. So what we need actually is lots of... Um, I, really, I really do want to get this right. One second. So what I actually want to do is set the attenuation by the size. So... We want to set things so that that works out. It's just it's just the inverse of this. Why am I brain fucking up on this so much? Um, okay, down here. Where are we? Where are we? We're at this. Cool. So we've got the light distance and we basically want to say anything that's um, within that is going to get lit. Anything that doesn't. I mean, we could just make a really, uh, basically just doing the inverse of this, aren't we? So we're saying the maximum light distance. It's annoying me. This is really silly. We're setting the light distance. Oh, the maximum is oh this is a bugger <laughs> Shimera is linking various lisps at the moment yeah that mal one isn't that for uh, wasn't that a lisp for that um, oh what's it called Templos or something like this it seems really strange if that stuff gets accepted in any way because he's meant to be building a pure you know, a temple for God. So it's kind of kind of strange to let just anything in there. I guess it's not part of the core distro, so it's it's whatever. <sighs> right, anyway. Um, how do we control our light size? Um, it means we're gonna we're gonna have a light size. God damn it. So light dist is I don't know, forty. And then we need to calculate the attenuation based on that being the far um, stuff. So it's 
whatever our um just this time I'm gonna look back on it after this stream and just know exactly what to do and I'll be shouting at myself which is really annoying and I know this is trivial but it is what it is okay so we've got a light distance and we've got a um, a maximum distance we want to say that if you're outside of that uh, it's zero so we want to tend down to zero at that point um, We can just do it in a linear fucking way, and that'll be that'll be fine. <laughs> oh dear. So um, we can just do max disk minus light disk, um, and we saturate. That's going to give us a number between um, zero and so the further away. Let's get that right. Let's just make sure I got that right. So. We take the maximum distance, let's just say 40, and then if it's 40 away, that's going to be zero. And if it's 39 away, it's going to be one. And so the nearer it is, um, the higher the number. That's cool. And then and so yeah, if that was um, divided by the max distance, then we're going to have a number that goes from 0 to 1 uh, based on how far away you are. This is really getting on my nerves. But whatever. Let's just do this for now. Um... Well, wow, that's annoying. Um, what have I done? What have I done? Um, so yeah, if you're 40 away, it'll be zero divided by 40, which is still 0, and 1 minus, oh wait, yeah, no, oh. yeah, that's right, then it'll be 1, so, no, that can't be right then. Um, oh, if anyone in the chat could help me out right now, it'd be super beneficial. We want to go from, we want it to be 1 at distance 0, and we want it to be 0 far away. Oh, we've done this a thousand times, man. Um, yeah, no, th is this? So I'm actually confusing myself now just so bad. If it's zero, one, zero, three. Oh wait, this is uh, yeah, I'm 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 thinking about this wrong because this is attenuation. Um Oh bugger it. We don't have enough time, we've only got half an hour left for me to be screwing this up so bad. We'll just hack it in. We'll let it be. Right, let's bring this down. Right, we want something to do with this kind of size and we will... We will hack it so it works. Um, okay, so what I actually wanted to do was make a, a shit ton of spheres and they're going to be our different lights. Um, so we're going to need some light data. So that bit I can still re <laughs> remember how to do. Uh, Deathstroke G is going to be light data. Um, we are going to have, uh, we're not going to worry about putting a color. We're going to put up a position and we would normally take the size from the, um, 
Uh, we would normally, I, what I think I would do is I'll pack the position as vec in vec3 and then I'll use the fourth coordinate to, to use a vec4 and I'll put like the size in there. But we're not going to worry about that today. But we are going to have a load of vector fours. So we're going to have an array of vector fours. We're going to have a hundred lights. Um, or maybe a thousand lights. Who knows? Let's do that. We'll do a thousand lights. Um, that is not happy because um, that is not how we write that type. Um, so that's fine. So then we're going to make uh, a variable for our UBO. Uh, so that's going to be called light data like this. It's going to start as nil. We're going to go over to the REPL. We are going to set light data to be um, a UBO. And we need some data for that UBO. So let's um, just park this here for a second. And we need a thousand light positions in some space here. And I think I'll, I'll do it over the space of a hundred. So we need uh, for i below a um, thousand. Let's collect a whole load of positions. And those positions are going to just be random. Um, so we're going to do minus random 100 uh, minus 50 from that. So it's going to go from minus 50 um, to 50. Like this, except the middle one, the middle one we want to be slightly different. Um, we want that to go from zero to 50. That's fine. Um, or maybe 80. I think we, we can stick around there. That's a load of vector threes. Um, then we're gonna stick this whole thing in a list, which is now um, a, like we could upload this um, to a GPU array of um, vector fours. So this is, that's fine. But what we actually need is to um, lay it out so it can be poured straight into a, um, sorry, this is, yeah, this is gonna produce a list of, of a thousand vector fours. We wrap it in another list because we're going to put it into a instance of this struct. I'm going to wrap it in yet another list because we're going to make a GPU array um, that's holding all these. So basically we, we have a load of vector fours in a couple of lists. And the reason is we're going to do this. We're going to do make GPU array. Um, we're going to make its initial contents are going to be this. Um, and then we need to tell it what the type is meant to be. So dimensions we don't have to care about the element type well, actually no the dimensions we do need to care about because we are going to be making just one this is going to be a gpu array with one element in it um, but it's going to be one of these structs with a thousand vector fours in thousand positions element type is going to be light data make sure we put a quote there we do that and we get our gpu array which is awesome so we're going to stick this here we're going to move that in a second and finally, we can go and make our light data, which is just this um, with that last GPU array. And what I think I'll do first is I'm going to make def var um, light um, data array and put that array in it. And then we'll do this. We'll do light data array, not like that, light data array. I freaked out. Okay, didn't like that. Uh, continue, right? Because the UBO also wanted a type. So the element type was light data. You can only populate a struct of light data with a list or an array. Why don't you like me today? Um, we aren't asking you to populate anything. Um, we're asking you just to use the damn data we gave you. So this sounds like a bug in Kevl. So I need to go fix that real quick. Populate light data. Yeah, it's trying to do something stupid here. Make GPU array, then it's calling make C array. It doesn't need to be doing that because we've already got a GPU array for it. Yep, it's trying to just make a GPU array straight off the bat. Um, doesn't need to do that at all. So um, if Type P data is a GPU array. Yep. Um, then just use the data as is. Otherwise, um, yeah, do that. We should probably have a check in here for type. We will come back to that. Um, let's try again um, by doing this. Now we've got a UBO with all our light data. That's good. So. 
Let's go and put these things in our reset function. Um, play with that. And yet another week where we're kind of racing for the finish line. Um, I am racing for the finish line. Let's do light uh, data array. That's cool. Compile that. Stick these variables up here so we know where they live. Okay. We are getting there. Okay, so now we have a whole shit ton of GPU data sitting in a UBO. Um, and now we need to pass this UBO up so it's available from our shader. Um, so here, wherever it is, no, not, not right here. We're going to go back to render. Um, we are going to take, we're going to add a load of information. So here, I think, yes, here's our sphere. We're going to pass up light data, which is of type light data. Um, and it is a UBO. So we have to provide that bit of information. Compile this and <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, clashing names. It doesn't like that. Oh, that's another bug. Okay, I need to watch this video later and find all these bugs because uh, we have got a few. Oh yeah, of course, this is gonna keep on freaking out until. <laughs> Until I fix it. Okay, so we're gonna change this light data to L data for now, and then continue. Then everything's still working, except this now is gray, which is interesting. Oh no, there's our, uh, there's all our particles, that was all. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, rather than taking our position from these guys, ooh, this is gonna be interesting. Um, we need to work it all out in this shader. Interesting. Okay. Um, how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? So we're passing up a lot of stuff right now. Well, the first thing is just the translation. Um, we're multiplying the model position by some translation, which is really just adding. So we can replace... Let's get unpack some of our light data. In fact, all we have to do, all we need is position. So light pos is going to be um, light data position, which is this here. I'm going to take L data. And this is going to be an array. So we need to pull out one of those um, vector fours. So we're going to take the first one. That's going to be our light pos. Um, yep. Is there anything else I'm missing here? Yeah, and then our... This might be okay. We take this, we take our light position, and then that's in world space, so we're going to add it. We've got model space, model space is going to world space, and then we really want to add it to this. Come on now. Oof. Okay. Which had no effect, interestingly enough. Oh yeah, because we're not passing up any UBO right now, so whatever we're getting out of there is going to be invalid. So... What we can do is we can go and find where light sphere is being used, which is in volume pass, and we're going to pass in L data. Oh, this is where I'm really hoping this all doesn't doesn't just fuck up. So light data is the UBO. It says down in the mini buffer UBO light data. Pass that in, disappears, but it is still there. So it's it's got some offset. But this sphere is oh yeah, this sphere is offset from that ball now. Um, that's cool. We can work with this. Okay, so this is the position of the vertex of the sphere itself. Um, our model to world stuff really isn't very interesting anymore. Um, we really just want to add our model position to our light position. And that is 
So we generated a thousand positions. This is one of them. And there's going to be a bunch more. Um, then we are going to... What are we going to do? Uh, the normal, we don't have to worry about the normal. Um, in fact, we don't need to do any transformations on the normal. Just leave them as they are. That's fine. Um, so do we need a model to world matrix anymore? No. So that can go. Um, and that's freaking out because we're trying to pass it in here. Bam, it's gone. Compile that and say continue. What? What are you doing? What are you doing? This is not how I want to find these bugs. Where are you? Volume pass. There's a... Apparently a... Um... What is that? Uniform 2FV. God damn it. Uniform 2FV. Is that just going to be an array of... Nope. I would have thought that was a vector 2 uh, that we're passing up. Uniform 2FV. I would have think that, that was... Uh, yeah, 2 floats or something like this. Vec 2 for VP size. Have we mucked up VP size somehow? Again, it feels like um, that bug I saw before with the one that, the one that we got earlier that was yeah it was that when I'm when I'm changing the uniforms something isn't updating properly and when it's when it's building the pipeline it's looking in the wrong index and earlier we saw it was looking outside the range of its cached um, IDs and this one it was looking at the wrong one yeah. World to view, okay, world to view. Um, that's going to be the same for all of them, so that's fine. That's to do with the actual current camera. View to clip is also the same, so I don't think we need to change anything else. Um, what we're going to do now is we're rendering one of these spheres. I want to render a whole bunch of spheres. I want to render like we've got, we're going to have a thousand lights potentially. So we're going to go with instances and we're going to say, but we'll start with 100 lights and we'll work up from there. Um, currently they're all looking, that is, we're now rendering 100 lights, 100, 100 spheres, but they're all the same one. Um, Borodust saying E-type case is awesome for checking and switching at the same time. Yes, it is. It's awesome. I love it. Um, I should put that in there actually, and I'll probably will do on the cleanup. Now, rather than indexing zero, we're going to use GL instance ID um, as our index. And so now what we're seeing is this is a hundred spheres, right? They're kind of clumped together, but these are a hundred different spheres and these are going to represent our lights. What we're also doing is we're going to make up a light color. Um, it's going to just be based on instance ID and some things. So vector three, um, sign plus some offset GL instance ID. Um, I really don't care right now. That's fine. That's going to be our light color, and this is in the vertex stage. So we're going to pass this on to the next stage where the lighting is actually being done. Um, and so this now is going to take a light color, which is a vec3. Compile this, didn't complain, compile this, and it's they don't. Oh, yeah, this is value and not values. Stupid boy pike. And then down here, we're going to change this to take a VEC3. Now, apparently, there's a light uh, color in there. And I think if we actually just did like, not light amounts, light color, we would see a whole bunch of different colors. Ugly ass colors, but they're going to be our light colors. Um, and now, let's have a look. What do we have? Um, we've got Calculate Diffuse is now going to take a light color as well. That's up here. Where is Calculate Diffuse? Light plus, and it's going to take a light color. 
light color before was just made up, so we just remove that. That should just work. Um, no, it's not like coal, it's like color now. And then we come down here and we are going to pass in a color. What are we going to do? Um, a light color. Oh, we're already doing that. It's already passed in. Excellent. So you'll probably see as this thing walks around. Um, that the color changes. Let's see if that actually happens. We'll fuck with the attenuation again and uh, yeah, we can see at different places. We can see the outlines of our spheres are essentially. So this is almost what we want. Um, so we're rendering 100 spheres. We're picking the color based on something made up. Um, we've got that data. Now we've got to stop lighting things based on that one ball and do them based on our other stuff. Um, and how do we do that? That's because our, right now, when we're calculating the diffuse, which I've just lost again, down here, our light position is being passed in as a uniform, which it no longer is. Um, light position needs to be passed in from the previous stage. Um, this would be cool. I just want to go and do it up here. So we're going to pass light pass. Yep, the things no longer match. It's freaking out. That's no problem. So we just go and fix this. Back three. Continue. Um, now the place that's calling it over here is wrong. Vec3, Vec3, Vec4, Vec3. Okay. Um, yes, that's correct. Um, we need to swizzle here. We will make it for the deadline. Come on. Oh, right, okay. So I'll actually swizzle later on because it, it did like that. So, um, swizzle, light pulse, XYZ. Bring up that error again and say continue. And now things are being lit based on what, which one of these spheres they're near. Still looks terrible though. Um, I hope it's going to get better than that. Um, da, 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 da. Probably won't. Um, we're going to... Woof, that does look really bad. Um, we are going to drop the size of these guys down. Just looks like big bloody holes. Okay, um, and then oh, we are going to have to... Oh, shit. Are we going to need to render... The, we do need to render the scene one more time for albedo. Because this really shouldn't be doing any albedo at all. Any, sorry, any albedo. Any ambient. Um, this should really be lit from there. Oh, we're fudging everything, but it's... Uh, it's roughly right. I'm gonna. I think we need to do a final pass, um, rendering out all the scene, the whole scene again, um, just with, just with albedo. What a pain in the butt. Um, how much time have we got? Ten minutes. Albedo ass. That's what it feels like. Right, okay. Um, fragment. Albedo frag. Right, so we're going to go through. Um, we're going to calculate 
we don't need to calculate the UV, we're going to be past it because we're doing single stage pipelines. Um, we are going to... I'm interested how this is going to work with depth actually. Oh, I'm not happy with the results so far. Ah oh, dear. Didn't want to have a failure right before Christmas, but it looks like it might happen. Right, where are we? Albedo, frag. Um, don't need to pass in any data. Um, do need to pass in, don't need a camera position. Um, do need these three, do need to be, don't need a VP size. I think that might be it. Um, we're not going to be calculating any albedo, uh, any albedo or diffuse stuff at all. We're just doing ambient. Um, so the diffuse color is irrelevant. Um, you can actually just say light amount is just going to be ambient. Yep. Get rid of all these comments. This is not code we want to remember anyway. Uh, frag normal is going to be just pulled out of that. So that's fine. Anything I'm missing here? Probably. No applicable method for the GLS function texture when called with a vec3. Oh yeah, this should be a vec2. Okay, so that's our albedo pass, and it takes a vec2, as it should. This should take points. Uh, we're going to have to do some more things. Um, I wanted to go, look how easy this is, and I really should have actually tried this once in my life beforehand. But never mind, this is how we learn. It has been a really good year for learning stuff, I must give it that. Uh, it has been illuminating got through a whole shit ton of stuff um, pass not sphere data no we're meant to be using um, empty buffer stream well that just killed everything probably just to do with depth um, so what I might do is for these stages, we can say with set f, um, we will turn off the depth test. Oh dear, continue. Hit the wrong button. Uh, the depth test function for the current context is less than. Um, I think we can just set that to nil. Well, test it in here. Um, with set f. Sure, I've got a thing for this. Have I not got that in our in our package either. Come on now. With set f, quick load. With set f, we will not be beaten this close to the bloody end. Come on. Right, with set f now takes a place, yes, which is the depth function. We're going to set it to nil for the duration of this block. In fact, that whole block. And I didn't fail, but it also didn't provide much. Um, I was expecting to see a little more than that. What if I just make green come out of this? Yeah, then we get everything. So why weren't we seeing anything in our... Uh... Oh, I bet it's because our ambient is set to zero. Yes, it is. So if we set this to two again, that's way too high. Ah, but this, these are rendering on top of each other and they're not blending. So we also need to turn on blending. And these take blending params, so we need a few of them. So let's go blending. Oh, uh, yeah. Blend params. I need a variable for that. Don't screw with me, machine. 
Step five, blending params. Set those to nil for now. Bring up the REPL. And we're going to set the blending params to be make some blending params because the defaults will probably be fine. And then we go over here and compile this and nothing. Um, because it's using alpha, it's using the W as the um, alpha. So we've got to know when we can. Oh, yeah, transparency is a bit of a problem, isn't it? <laughs> With deferred rendering, this will be interesting. Um, well, this looks like garbage. How do we, uh, yeah, how do we do this last part? I suppose, oh no, they actually mentioned in the thing, didn't they? It was, it was additive blending. They were using additive blending for everything. So how do we do additive blending? How does that work? Um, additive blending based on what? Let's see if we can find anything here on it. Blending. Um, it's not possible to do blending. Don't say that. I know you said uh, we should be doing additive blending down here. Right. Oh, come on. They did. They said something down here. Okay, right. So. Rendering large number of lights. Yes, that's roughly what I wanted to be doing. Effectively reduce the number of computations, blah, blah, blah. Additively blended together. Resulting fragments are additively blended together. Um, I think we could actually do it by source color rather than, um, so when we make blending params, rather than doing it by, um, so we can do mode RGB, or we can just leave those as defaults. We'll do um, function add, function add. Can we just set source RGB? Oh, this is where I'm really outside of stuff I know. Source RGB to be... I don't even know what the valid values are here. Let's go have a look. Source color. There we go. We'll try that. Source color. Um... I don't care about how alpha is being blended. I want destination RP, RGB to be um, one minus source color. Let's just let's just see what happens. Oh come on, nobody cares, right? Right, that makes some new blending grams. Um, well, that didn't do what I thought it would. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, this isn't looking good. We've got two minutes left. Who knows that blending stuff? Source alpha, source alpha. Source RGB is source color, one minus source color. See, I would normally use alpha for blending. But, um, so what they were, what were they saying? Enable blend and source alpha as GL1. Really? Well, holy shit, that actually did something. Um, but it's very faint on the strength of the colors. So let's just see if we can throw... Because we're out of time, may as well hack this to shit now anyway. It's already a mess. Um, where are our colors? Our horrible color generation stuff we did up here. Yeah. Who knows? Let's just multiply this by something. Anyway. Really? That doesn't make any difference? 
damn you! Well, that didn't work. <laughs> Christ on a bike. Okay, fine. Um, I think I'm going to have to cool defeat on this one, which is a bummer, but it'll have to do. Uh, the suspense is terrible. Yeah, this is, uh, the, the coding's worse. Um, so, I didn't manage to get uh, deferred light sources, deferred light volumes working on this stream. Um, I don't feel like we're too far away. Um, so, what we do have, if I can just take off the blending for a second, is we have some of the constituent parts. We have all of this stuff is um, the, right, all, all of the gray stuff is the ambient, uh, ambiently lit um, particles. This whole blob around here is just the particles being lit by our various light sources. There's loads of balls there. Um, and if we got the attenuation right, that would actually look kind of natural, but I haven't managed that. Um, so, yeah, that didn't work too well. Um, make GPU array this one here. These things all got a bit too clumped together, to be honest. So we should probably have set those at 300 and 150 or something. Just, ah, oh, man. This is one of these things I'm going to tinker and I'll be able to get it working after a while. But, um, well, I guess it's not tonight. Yeah, stop messing with it, Chris. We're not going to get there. So, yeah, ex <laughs> Christmas homework, absolutely. Um, I wanted to finish this more of an upbeat. Um, I was hoping I'd have, like, shiny stuff in the background while we did this, but it's, um, it is not to be. What I actually wanted to say was this last year has been really cool. I mean, we've had episodes like this where stuff hasn't worked, and we've had episodes where stuff has. Um, I'm just really, really blessed to have, like, you folks turning up week after week and watching this stuff. I've been, like, the YouTube channel's about to hit 130 K views, which is ridiculous for graphics in Lisp. It doesn't make any sense. I, I'm just, I'm just really happy with how this is going, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to what we'll do next year. I really want to step up the game. I want to actually, yeah, learn more things and make some more stuff and make some games next year on the stream as well. Um, it's, it's really been a blast, and I'm just, yeah, thank you all very, very much. I hope you have all a fantastic Christmas. Um, we will. Hopefully come back and, and fix up these particles and maybe some of the other things that we haven't completed uh, along the way. But it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I, I'll, um, I'll get the uh, get some of the bugs fixed in Capital to do with layout, which is going to let us start playing with SSBO and compute and all those things. It's going to get, it's get, basically, there's all this stuff opening up in Capital right now and I'm really stoked. And uh, yeah, we're seeing some bugs from some changes, but that that's fine. That is to be expected. And yeah, here's to the next year and here's to all of you. Thank you very much and good night. See you next time.